Alright, so if you guys are like me, you perhaps uh, really just want to get this Atlas migration stuff done and over with and do it as quickly as possible. This guide is the quick and dirty how to get your Night Scout to still be working if you don't care about your old Night Scout data. In the way that I'm going to show you, it doesn't migrate your old data into a new database, it just leaves it behind. So this is only to be followed if you truly don't care about losing your old data and just want this to work going forward in the most expeditiously easy way possible. So that's what I'm going to do. So the first thing you have to do is make sure that your Night Scout site is updated. Um, my particular site is old. You can tell that by looking on your site, scroll down to the About section in your Night Scout settings, and you can see that this is old. Um, the version numbers are higher than 12 now, they're in the 13s. So that means you need to log into your GitHub account. So go to github.com, log into your account, and find your CGM remote monitor rep repository. So if you click on your repositories, you probably only have one or two, but click on CGM remote monitor. This is the quick and easy, dirty way to go ahead and get a brand new version of it all up to date is you can go to settings and you say delete this repository and you're going to type in this. I'm going to do it by copying and pasting. And again, this is just quick and dirty. Yep. Okay. I do that. Oh, I have to confirm with my password. Uh, I have to remember what my password is. I think it's there. Confirm password. Okay, so it's gone. That's good. Now I just need to fork it again. So what I need to do is go to github.com slash night scout slash cgm dash remote monitor. So I go there. Yep, I'm in night scouts cgm remote monitor and I'm going to fork this. So we go over to the fork on the right hand side, fork a copy. And it's bringing, what it's doing is forking a brand new updated version that is all up to date. You can tell it's up to date now because now in my version it says this branch is even with Night Scout Master. Cool, that's exactly what we want. It's all up to date. So I have a brand spanking fresh clean version of the code that makes a Night Scout site. So now I'm going to go over to my Heroku and put this brand new code into my Night Scout site by deploying it. So I go to my deploy and I go and if it's not connected, if you don't see connected to here, you're going to want to go ahead and click on GitHub and connect to your account and your CGM remote monitor. Um, if it's not connected, it's really easy. Just click on GitHub, type it in, press connect. And then you'll see these deployment options down here. You're going to want to enter, uh, do the master deployment for here. You shouldn't actually have to enter master. Let's see if we disconnect. I'll show you how this is done. So we can do CGM remote monitor. In fact, I think that's a good idea to do because it should grab that new code then, connect it. Uh, there we go. Now it has the branch here to deploy. And now that it's a selectable event, we're all connected. That's good. It picked up the latest. We're going to deploy it. So we'll go through, we'll deploy it all. And this will take a little bit, so I'll probably pause the video here for a second and come back when it's done. So hang tight. All right. And so now it's successfully deployed. It went through all of its little widgets. And it says here, deployed Heroku, check, it's all successful. We can view it if we want. And if we view it, da -da -da, if we go down here and we refresh this view, it will have a new version number of 14, and that is the current one. So that's great, we're good. Um, we have successfully updated. So that's only step one. The next step we need to do is actually get a brand new database to replace the MLab, MLab that's now no longer going to be used. So what I would recommend for this is that you follow the directions. I will add this to a loop eventually. We'll get this updated. 
But on the Night Scout uh, how-tos, I will put this page uh, in a link at the bottom of this video so you can find it. But basically Night Scout has a brand new uh, template for building Night Scout sites, which is a lot similar to Loop Docs. It's great, it's easy to follow. Go up to install new Night Scout, even though we have an old one, we're just gonna go to step three, the create Atlas account. So follow the directions here. I'm gonna go ahead and right click on this in a new window so that I can have these um, tiled. Let me put this over here. Hold on one sec. Exit full screen. Let us, if you hold and click the green button, you can tile it to the right screen. And that means we can tile this one to the left screen so you can see both of them together. So this is my working, these are the directions. Let's go ahead and uh, create an account. We'll start for free. I don't have a company. How am I using it? Here's, let's go at dsimonekatie at gmail.com. I am Katie. And yes, I know it says sign up with Google, but I'm just going to show you in case you aren't. Okay, I agree. Let's get started. Oh, how am I using it? All right. Uh, uh, sure, I'm migrating. There you go. Since it won't let me go past that, there we go. So we did this first part. Let's keep going. It says the next step is to create a shared cluster. Okay. Let's create, make sure you choose the free one. Don't choose the one they're starting you off at. Uh, so create free cluster. And now we're gonna scroll down and yes, let's choose the one that's defaulted here and notice it says free, that's good. So let's click the green button on the bottom. You might not be able to see that because my um, window and window might be covering it, but at the bottom there's a green create cluster button. And so now it's building. It might take a little bit more than three minutes. So I'm going to pause this as all of these steps finish and we'll come back when my screen looks like this over here on the left. So let's wait it out. All right, so now we're connected and it's set up. We're looking good. So like the directions say, it says to click on connect. So we will do that. We'll click on connect. And I can close that out. And it says, don't use the obvious one that it's asking you to do the allow access from anywhere. So let's choose that. And it says add, click on the add IP address. Yep, okay. And then add a username, for example, Night Scout, with a password. Write this information down. You'll need it later. Okay. So let's go to Night Scout as the user. And the password I'm going to do as Night Scout. Okay. I have a password generated. I can create that. Cancel, I don't need to save that. All right, so we're good. Now we need to choose a connection method, just like it says, so we'll keep doing that. We'll say choose a connection method. Choose the middle one, which is connect your application. All right, this is great. We're looking good. We're going to click the copy button. Okay, the copy button. So you copy it. Now we're going to go back over to our Heroku account. We're going to go to settings, reveal config, go down to the Mongo URI. I'm going to click on the edit button. I'm going to highlight this whole thing. I'm going to paste it. I'm going to change two things. I'm going to change the password to the password that I put in there, which was Night Scout 123 and the database name 
is Night Scout, I think. Let's double check the instructions. Uh, oh, we can name it anything we want. So I'm going to name it uh, data. I'm going to just name it database. So there. Okay, so save the changes. All right, that's great. So we did that and we're good. So I'm going to pause it right here. I have somebody knocking at me. Hold on one sec. All right, so now let's check and see if this worked. We will close this side out. Let's go back over here. We will go and open up our app. Okay, we have to redirect to Profile Editor, not surprising. Um, UTC, save. Uh, I'm going to authenticate my site so that I can save changes. So this is your API secret. If you can't remember it, it's in your Heroku settings. Once you enter it properly, it will say admin authorized down there at the bottom. Um, if you want to change it, you can, but I think they usually keep this at UTC. Um, I have usually had it at US Pacific because that's my time zone. I save it and close this out. Uh, close that. I'm going to go back to the site. Did it not save it? Let's see. Open app. There, it's saved. So we will have to wait a couple minutes and see if the data makes it in. And if it doesn't, I'm just going to redeploy um, to make sure that the changes take effect. Oh, you know what else I have to do? Is we need to go to the overview, go to the configure add-ons, and we're going to delete this one. I think we can delete it here. Delete add-on. We don't need that anymore. We're going to delete it by following directions, which is to add that on. Okay, you enter your site's name there, Monster Draw, or whatever it is before the Heroku app.com. Enter that in, remove it. There we go. Personally, I don't like Paper Trail either, so I just might as well delete that for now. It doesn't do us any good. It's a free thing. It tends to confuse people for the most part, so we'll just go with that. So now we wait. I will be back in five minutes. All right. All right. So there we are. The uh, five minutes is up. Her database is all working now. The MongoDB database atlas is all connected. Her CGM's flowing. Didn't have to do anything else. It all worked. Um, I don't have access to her old data. So if I went to go pull reports now, it would only be on these really, really recent things. So just so you know that this method, again, is only if you don't care about your old data. You'll get a little bit of backfill um, from the Dexcom servers, but not much. And uh, But it's really nice, it's easy, and it's not, not gonna mess up, it has a low possibility of messing up. You can click on your cluster if you wanna see more about it, like verify that yes, indeed, it's all going here. You can see that under the collections, you now have the usual stuff that you used to see in MLab, which is device status, entries, food, all of that kind of stuff. Entries will have um, the BG values in there. So it looks a lot like MLab did, but again, this isn't MLab. We dusted that, I left that in the past. I just wanted a quick and easy, dirty way to um, get everything up and running in like 10 minutes without having to read a whole bunch of directions. And this was the way. Okay. so. Hope that helped you all. It was quick, but I know you can pause this. Um, I will work on getting loop docs, loop docs updated with this, but um, just so you know, if you're doing it, you don't have to do anything to your loop app. It should still run. We'll cover, um, this is just about getting your database issues. Don't forget to delete um, your MLab from this installed add-ons port. Uh, in the overview. Uh, you definitely do want to delete that. So don't forget to do that. And that's it. Have fun.